are now tuned in to Hot Topics with Donna. And on this show, we do one thing. Keep it real hot. That's honest, open, and transparent. If you didn't know, now you know. As we bring the vibe and a little bit of glorious sunshine to your heart, soul, and mind. Your lovely host, Hot Donna, will be with you in just a few moments. But while you wait, go ahead and set an atmosphere of peace in your space. Lights down low, get your hydration on, vibration zone. Cause tonight you're about to receive some delicious food for your soul. Are you ready? 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 It's about to get. And in just a few moments, we about to turn the heat all the way up. That's right. It's about to go down right now on Hot Topics with Donna. Show your virtual love by smashing that thumbs up and heart icon as many times as you can. Without further ado, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing your host, the one and only Hot Donna. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hey, Mr. McNeil, how are you? Hey, Brandon, how are you? Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Hot Topics with Donna. I am your host, Donna Taylor, here live from DTV. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in. If this is your first time or you've been on and off, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, <clears throat> everyone know who I am. I am Donna Taylor. Um, so I'm super, super excited um, about um, interviewing this guest. Um, and like I tell you guys all the time, a lot of my guests I have not had the pleasure of meeting. I just reach out to them or they reach out to me and that's how... Um, a lot of my guests are here on Hot Topics with Donna. But before I get started, here's my book, An Imperfect Marriage Saved by Grace. You can find it on um, Amazon. So thank you, thank you, thank you for those that already purchased it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And before I bring my guests on, let me go ahead and give you the word for you, for me, for him. And it's contentment. And it says, I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or a empty one with plenty or little, for I can do everything through Christ that who's given me strength. And that comes from Philippians 4, 12 through 13. So I am going to bring my guest on. So just hold on. And that's guest tonight and also chose it for us because we have to learn to be content with the things that God has placed in our lives. We may not have everything that we want, but we definitely have life. So that's better than having nothing at all. So how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I am good. And so the word that I chose for you tonight was contentment. And so I don't know if you heard me read the scripture or not, but how do you find contentment? Because I read some of your posts during the um, power outage, and it was basically saying the same thing, like you know how it feels to have a full stomach, how to have an empty stomach, but still be content. So how do you stay in contentment? Through the word of God, first of all, as stay in the word. Um, try to be 
obedient to what he's telling me through his word. And he said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. So he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Right. (laughs) So, and so tell people who you are and where you reside. And then we're just going to get started. Just have some great dialogue with each other. Okay. I am Thomas Gibson. I I live in the Jackson Hamlet community right outside Mm -hmm. of Aberdeen, between Aberdeen and Pinehurst. The low JH, as we call it. Uh, I'm close uh, by you, right here over in Foxfire, so I'm close by you. <laughs> right behind <laughs> you. So, um, I, uh, I'm an independent gospel recording artist. I am a playwright. I do a little acting, directing, and producing. I try to wear a lot of hats to bring my gifts out, so to speak. <laughs> Absolutely. And so <clears throat> I know um, I was going through your page, and I love your encouragement on there. And then I also um, read where you said you're just you and you know and if people you know are just looking at your page just to be looking at it you know i'm just paraphrasing then you're on the wrong page because you're totally here to inspire and uplift people Absolutely. and i was thinking wow you know we shouldn't have to you know like you're not explaining yourself but i understand where you was coming from because a lot of times people look at our page and they try to read into mm-hmm. what put on there and it may have nothing to do with you it could be something that you're feeling something that you've seen and so tell us about that well first of all i'm i'm who god created me to be absolutely i I cannot duplicate anybody else i don't try to Uh, i'm I'm just me and i I love the lord i love to encourage people because Mm -hmm. we never know what somebody's going through in a day um, you know, we can look at people and think, oh, they got it all together, but behind closed doors, they are really falling apart. And just to encourage somebody with the word daily, yeah. that's that's just what I do. So I don't try to be like somebody else to do mm-hmm. that. I just have to encourage people in their walk. That's just me. Absolutely. And, and I love, you know, what you just said. And that's me, you know. And that's the basis, too, for Hot Topics with Donna, because, like, when I start selling jewelry, God would always give me something to say after, you know, I do Mm -hmm. my jewelry. But sometimes I have what I'm going to say, and then he'll take it a whole nother, you know, like, wait, I'm like, wait. But I go with it. And then when he told me to come on this side, and it's just been a blessing to see, you know, so many people with their own different challenges. Mm -hmm. And that's what stands for honest open and transparent because like you just said we can fool people all day long but we can't fool the father and we might as well just be who we are and love who we are falls and out and if people truly love us they're gonna truly accept us the way that we are exactly exactly you know and I, i was talking to a friend of mine just last night and we were talking about how people try to be like somebody else. Absolutely. How somebody's pointing fingers at somebody for whatever reason. And I said, well, on, on that day, on Judgment Day, mm-hmm. who's going to be standing there with us? We I have to give an account for what we've done, Absolutely. what we didn't do, what we said, and what we didn't say. So, you know, love people for where they are. Where they are. You can't change anybody, can't make anybody change. You can drop the seed, and that's mm-hmm. all you can do. And, and 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 that's what I always say because if you love me and I'm your friend, even if I'm at my lowest of low mm-hmm. and I mess up, when you can love me still in my mess, that's what God wants us to do. But why? And I want to ask you this question: mm-hmm. Why can't Christians do that? Because you know I always tell people, and I'm just honest, you know, and transparent. See, the sinners don't worry about that because they truly got that loyalty thing down yeah. pat. Yes, they do. They got yes, yes. that loyalty <laughs> thing down pat. If they are drunken together, sinning together, one thing about them, they are going to look out for each other mm-hmm. no matter what. But can you please explain to me why is that so hard for some of us Christians to do that? Well, some of us feel that we've already made it home. Huh. Well, they- <laughs> we've done nothing wrong we live in these glass houses we can throw stones all day yeah, long yeah. And, and 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 nothing is comes of that you know my thing on that i want to say this about that um if we if we take a minute to 
look at a person to talk to a person mm -hmm. not listen to what somebody else has to say about the person Absolutely. but the yes. person. and you you'll find out that that person is going through far worse mm -hmm. than you can ever imagine right you know but instead of loving on them mm -hmm. we'll take mm -hmm. that and we'll find the next person did you know what you hear did you know you talk about them Absolutely. Instead, of, instead of praying for them you know if we took the time to pray more than we talk you know for yeah. yeah. each other more and talk about each other it'd be a better world but yeah. we just can't seem to get that get a grasp on that you know we've made it we we're saved we got saved we are here and there are so many of uh, everybody is down here you know right, you don't, right. don't look down on people regardless of what they do or what they say or where they are because it could be you in the blink of an eye you know you are so true and i love how you wrote in one of your posts about how you were just sitting in the darkness mm -hmm. but in in your closing you said this is how some people are living they Every day. every day every day yes yes and, and god i believe you know we are we, so many have said that this god did this for this reason and that reason that kind of thing with the power outage i just took it that he gave us all a little taste of those that we bypass those mm -hmm. that we overlook mm -hmm. who are those are his children too mm -hmm. we're all his mm -hmm. creation you know, and we Absolutely. are to love one another and do the best we can for one another. You know, I used to do clothes and blanket drives for the homeless. Right. That, you know, when even back in my day when I was out there in those streets hanging out, right. you know, right. I always came across somebody who would ask me, Can I just sit in your van to get warm? Can you give me a dollar to buy me a sandwich? That kind right. of thing. And I thought about that that could have easily been me I even wrote a song about it could have been me right uh, we, we never know how that table's gonna turn and you you just help where you can help to the best of your ability i ain't saying you got to go in your house and empty your house with everything you got to give it away but right. help where you can help you know a blanket at the dollar at roses five dollars or whatever it costs it, 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 it's not that expensive mm -hmm. that'll help somebody else that's living out in the elements daily absolutely you know? And, and, you know, and like with me, you know, I only lost my power for a day, but mm -hmm. just that was just a reminder how we take these little things mm -hmm. for granted, you mm -hmm. know, going in your house and flipping on a switch. Mm -hmm. And then when you flip on the switch, there's still nothing to, you know, to turn on. And, you know, and when I came here, I didn't have my hot water. And I was like, Lord, I'm not even complaining because I remember in the old days, we used to, you know, take a wash up with warm mm -hmm. water. And I said, well, Lord, I have light so I can warm my water. And mm -hmm. so I just feel that we need to get back to the, the basics. The and basics. how do you think we can do that, especially being Christians? Because like you said, these, these are some people like right now, they're out in these mm -hmm. elements and it's mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. If we all would get on one accord, mm -hmm. that would be the, the first step to get on one accord and do what the Bible says to do instead of doing what what this preacher, this preacher, this preacher says to do. If we do what the word of God says to do, it, we're living according to what the scriptures say. You right. know, we all take sometimes take the word and we'll twist it and we'll add to and take away from for our own benefit. But that's not what he also warns us not to add to or take away from. Absolutely. And if we would get in that word and read that word and ask for understanding, then I'm sure he will give it to us because like I said we ask and we shall receive. So ask for knowledge, ask for understanding, you know, and get back to what God wants us to do mm -hmm. as kingdom builders. You know, Absolutely. and that's that's just what we need to start at. Get on one accord, on one page. One one page. And mm -hmm. so, how do you, with all the chaos <clears throat> that's going on around us, mm -hmm. how do you stay focused on God's word and doing what He's called you to do without allowing things and situations to consume you? So that's the first thing I do in the mornings. I thank God for the new day, right. and I get and I get in the word. Mm -hmm. And daily I pray, whether I'm riding down the road or I'm sitting at my desk or I'm just walking down the hallway at work, I talk to God. You right. know, and that's the most important thing. That's that's just how he keeps me is to stay in that word. If he says keep your mind stayed on him, he'll keep you in perfect peace. 
you know, uh -huh. and things are falling around, falling down around me as I just pray, you know, and there, there are some things that I'm dealing with, mm -hmm. you know, I lost seven of my siblings in less than nine years. And wow. I have yet to come to terms with that. Mm. But standing that word, I understand what mm -hmm. it means to grieve, how to grieve, right. when to grieve, you know, and that's what helps me daily is staying in the word of God through prayer. And so let, me, so let me ask you this. So in this process of losing your siblings, do you find that if you totally, totally grieve that it would like cause you to just be like, I'm just, I don't know where to go from here. Mm -hmm. Because I know grief can be hard, you know, because like I lost my late husband too. And so I, I had to learn to grieve in stages, if you will, mm -hmm. to, keep, yeah. to keep me in my right mind. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. I mean, you know, and I had to learn to not be um, so hard on myself if I have that day of grieving. So losing your siblings, nine, how do you, how do you do it? Again, through prayer through the word of God. <laughs> that's that's just my go to that's my foundation. Wow. Uh, but one thing um the I I say the grieving process for me I, I can deal with it because I know they accept the Christ before yeah. they left here. Yeah. So that gives me comfort and that gives me a peace of mind knowing that they're safe with him and that they're not suffering in, in the bodies anymore. They so him had cancer. Yeah. I had a brother who was HIV positive, you know, and that was something that we didn't want to talk about, but right. I'm going to talk about it because right. it had right. to be spoken, you know, to be free, you mm. have to speak on things. Yeah. So yeah. I had to talk about it. We were two years apart, two years and some months mm -hmm. apart, but we were the closest and we were the youngest too. But his death was extremely hard for me, right. but I thank God for the years that he gave me with him for yeah. one. Yeah. I thank God too that he was saved before he left here. So that's my comfort. That's where I that's my key. So that's Amen. what I deal with. That's how I deal with all of them because I was able to witness each mm -hmm. one of them accepting yeah. Jesus their Lord. So I'm I'm just thankful that it wasn't um one of those um car crashes or house fires where I didn't get a chance to talk to him. But right, he allowed right. me he even allowed me to travel all the way to Rochester, New York to witness one brother and one sister accepting mm -hmm. him as, as Lord and Savior. So that's where I take comfort in. That's where my peace comes. And that's how that's how I got through the grief process with all of them. <laughs> and then you wrote a song you dedicated called Fix It, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And you yes. what, and so you dedicated that to your brother. So how did that come about? Well, the, the, the whole CD that I've, I've completed was supposed to be a family project with okay. my with two of my brothers and two of my sisters mm -hmm. it did that fell apart but they contributed to the writing okay. and uh, that particular song was supposed to be it's intended to be a duet between the two of us and of mm -hmm. course he took ill and he passed away but i just want to do that as a dedication to him and tribute to right. him right right and so how long have you been writing and doing playwrights and all this great stuff I, and i read where you had did a play and you you lost some family members doing the yes. doing your production yes um i started writing plays oh god about 10 years 12 years ago mm -hmm. and it started out i wrote a skit for the choir members at the church mm -hmm. just want to see if we can just sit around and talk about read off and laugh at that kind of thing and god just started dealing with me with some with more issues pertaining to just that little skit and right. it, the first play i actually wrote and produced was the church fight and mm -hmm. the church fight was about the church members get behind closed doors and we're going to talk about the pastor we're going to get the pastor <laughs> The whole man, y'all. But in the process, we tell everybody each other's business. Right. You know, um, I wasn't supposed to be a part of the cast because I was I didn't think I was an actor. Right, right, <laughs> but, right. But there was a lady who she couldn't do the part, so I had to go back in and rewrite her part into a male part, right. and I had to play that part, and it turned out well. 
you turn out very well. And yeah. so do you still write, you know, for your church or and do and when you do, is it only like is it open to, you know, the community or is just you select you hand select the people to play these parts in your um your plays? The first two plays I did hand select because there were so many people in this area that I knew that could sing that mm -hmm. could bring these characters to life, but they, nobody was hearing them because nobody was calling on them. Right. So I called on them to be a part of the production and right. they came in and they nailed it. Um, this last play that I wrote, um, All Things, we're in um, production for that one now. Mm -hmm. It was based on Lakita Goins' single, All Things Work. Mm -hmm. And um, she had called me one Saturday morning. She said, God just put in my spirit to tell you to write this script for based on my song. Wow. And I had I had actually given up on trying to do any more plays because there it was wow. so many book walls I turned it I ran into. Mm -hmm. But um I took pen to paper and I went for it. And actually it was um part two. Her mm -hmm. play her, her the, the play I wrote for her song was part two to another play I had written, Sisterhood. Right, right. She was in that particular production. Right. So I took her character and I told her story mm. pertaining to her song. And it we're working on that but she um she helped me with some of the casting because there were some people that she knew that yeah. wanted to do parts and we started rehearsing and, and it just we just waiting to put it on the stage. So when do you think it's gonna be out? We're hoping spring, late spring mm -hmm. of next year. Uh, we had we had a lot of rehearsal time in, so and then some things happened that we had to put everything on pause. Absolutely. So we're gonna get back into it probably the first of the year and go from there. Because people keep asking, when are you gonna do another play? When are you gonna do another play? When are you gonna do another play? And I was like, oh, uh, we're working on it. <laughs> we're <laughs> working on it, so it's coming. <laughs> and so you have a CD out called, you released, um, it's called My Journey. Mm -hmm. So when, that in 2011 yes yes that was the first that was the door opener i call that my door opener because there was so right. many opportunities so many opportunities came from that project mm -hmm. it didn't go to the stellar awards or anything but it opened a lot of doors and i met a lot of great people Absolutely. through that, that production there so i'm thankful for that and of course they're still playing some of the singles on internet radio so i'm thankful for that as well and i and met so i met my new producer, Richard Davis, who produced my latest project, mm -hmm. I met him through that project. So, and, and so do you find um, that it's hard for your local people to support you versus people that you don't know, or has it been a mixture, if you will? More so people that I don't know. Mm -hmm. especially with this this second project is more people that i don't know is supporting it than the people that i do know mm -hmm. and you know that's all right too they they know what's yeah. there you know so i don't trip on that if they don't they don't they do they do you know but god has who he has in place Absolutely. to hold the door Absolutely. open yeah and so do you or are you currently working on any new music well i'm going to released the full CD uh, probably February of next year. I released two singles this year okay. and they've done, they've done quite well. Um, so I'm going to release the full, I'm going to release a third single probably January and I just put the full CD out in, in February or March right before the play comes out. So. so you do like a concert and sing some of it or how would you, how do you think you're going to, you know, let the world know here I am? First time I did a, I did a CD release for the first time. This time I'm hoping to do the same, but right. with a band and live vocals this time around. So yeah, right. And so, how do your, how do you balance your time to do all of this? Because I, you know, you work. You said you work, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So yes. how do you, how do you balance your time? How, how do you balance, you know, your time saying, well, you know, do I write? Do I sing? How, how do, how is your time management? And then you feel, you know, serving God, you know, mm -hmm. reading the Bible and doing all of this. So how does that look for you? <clears throat> Most times when I'm writing, <laughs> <my work. laughs> 
I rarely, rarely, rarely write at home. Most of my time spent writing is at work. Um, I usually go in and I'm, I like knock my work out, get it done. Then right. I sit there and God drops something in my spirit mm -hmm. and I just start, I just get on the computer and I just start typing it up and I save it and come back to it another day mm -hmm. or whenever he gets me back to it. And that's how I spend my time writing. Um, like I said, when I get in the Word, that's the first thing I do in the morning. Absolutely. And the last thing I do at night is get in the Word. And that's how my time is spent. But as far as going out singing lately, I haven't done much of that because of my work schedule. But right. I'm still writing. I just um, was just offered a um, project last month to write um, the theme song for a movie, the independent movie that's coming out next year. Wow, that's awesome. That really fell in my lap. And I was like, okay, how, how am I going to do this? But they want R&B music. And so I, ha I, had to, I had to go back and right. settle back with for a little bit <laughs> to, to bring all that out. But I, I got it done. So I'm excited about that, see where that's going right. to go. But just to be <laughs> that, it was just amazing. And and so when you say R and B, because do you listen to different music or you strictly just listen to your gospel music? Oh, I listen to a lot of old school R and B. Okay. And, right. Uh, I I have my cousin got rich her soul, but she used to <laughs> always always clown me because I would take an old an R and B song and I would flip it and make mm -hmm. it a gospel song, you know, right. and she was like, hey, what the song is saying, hey, what they're saying, well, this is, this is what I'm, I'm getting from it, you know, right. and there's right. always a message, there's a message in every song, whether right. it's positive or negative, right. whether it's good or bad, there's a message in those songs, and people say, well, we, we as Christians shouldn't be listening to R&B, well, if you're listening with a spiritual ear, because first of all, the gift came from God, right. the enemy is the one that tainted it, Right, you know, right. he's the one that put the poison there. But if it's not being degrading to mm -hmm. someone, mm -hmm. that kind of thing, I can listen to it. Absolutely. But once, once you, start, Absolutely. you start bashing people and that kind of thing, and I turn it off and turn it to something else. So I rarely listen to the radio. I listen to the radio at work because it's in my department there, and the staff wants to hear it. But when I'm in the car or if I'm at home, mm -hmm. I always put on the old school stuff, and I vibe to that. And I found myself a lot of times, you know, just taking a pen while I'm writing. And I'm like, oh, let me change the words to that. Let me change the words to that. Okay, this is what this can do. You know, so. Right, right. <laughs> you know. And, and that's so good that you say that because a lot of times we as Christians, we get so saved that we forget to live. And, you know, mm -hmm. like I said, there's nothing wrong with listening to secular music as long as it's clean. Right. You know, right. it's, right. you know, it's clean because we can't desensitize ourselves from the world when we're supposed to be God's vessels going out to to get his people. Mm -hmm. And then we have to know how to relate to people, like we said earlier, mm -hmm. where they're at. So if I'm so closed off and I'm just like, nope, I'm listening to only gospel music. But then I see these young people out here you know, taking each other's lives and all this kind of stuff, mm -hmm. then I need to listen to some clean rap, if you will, or some right. clean music. And then when I start talking to them, I'll be like, oh, what do you think about this song? You know, so-and-so mm -hmm. got out. Mm -hmm. And that can be your icebreaker if we want to draw our kids in, if we want to draw older people in that's lost. Right, right. You know, there, was, there were times when I would hang out on the corner Mm -hmm. Everybody's drinking in there, going on and on. And this one particular guy came to me one night, and he said, I was sitting in the car, and he walked in my window. He started singing a song by Fred Hammond. Mm -hmm. and he looked, looked at me. He said, Tommy, he said, I love gospel music. He said, I like my R&B, and I like my rap, too. He said, mm -hmm. but I love gospel music. And mm -hmm. I looked at him and said, there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. You know, and he started with everybody pointing their fingers because I do that. I said, you know what? Let them judge. But what would what they judge with, they'll be judged. So yeah. you're gonna live your life because you don't mm -hmm. have to answer mm -hmm. for everything you do. Every everything. And you know, and that's why, you know, I'm like you, you know, because even when all this happened, you know, people was talking about because it was, you know, the other genders, if mm -hmm. you will. But I, you know, and I was telling a, 
a lady today. She she knew you. I forgot her name. I I told her I was going to interview today, but she she knew you real well. And you know, and I said, you know, people want to say this was an act of God or whatever the case may be. But I, I'm I'm a God loves His children and He chastens us. But mm -hmm. I'm saying if this is the God that we serve, that's gonna right. let forty thousand people, His children, mm -hmm. save their faith. Go without light, knowing yeah. that there are people on life support. And I'm yeah. thinking, like, that which y'all really think that our mm -hmm. father is? Right. You know? right. And I, I mean, and you know, and I, people can believe whatever they want to believe, mm -hmm. but I know the God that I serve, I know he chases me when I do wrong. Right. He chases you when you do okay. wrong. But okay. you mean to tell me he is chasing 40,000 people mm -hmm. to right. have them in a blackout? Mm -hmm. To have his children in hospitals, nursing homes, yes, yes, uh, without yes. light, and this is the guy you say we we that he, he this is what he did to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't I don't get that. You know, I saw a lot. Of I mean, you know what I'm saying? I'm yes. like, so this is the guy that you tell me that I serve, that I believe everything that's in me that keeps me, mm -hmm. but you, mm -hmm. my God, because of one particular group right right and so here he, everybody else this is what he gave and i was like that's not the god i serve he's going to chase all of us and and he doesn't need to do uh forty thousand uh people blackout to right. chase in his kids right. he doesn't exactly. need to do that exactly <laughs> exactly right. He don't, need, yeah, he don't need to do a 40,000 40, people, you know, with no lights to chase right. them. If it's me, he needs to chase it. Why he don't go to your house and cut your lights off when he's chasing me? Exactly. Exactly. It don't make sense. It, doesn't, it does not. It, it does not make sense. But, you know, I, I listen to people and I say, God, we we have to get back to a way of thinking that you can do whatever you want to do, how mm -hmm. you want to do it. But I know the God that we serve will not destroy 40,000 people because of one secular people. Right, right. And then at the end of the day, he can do, if that's who he wants to chase, he's not going to hurt his other children. Right. Right. In, in the right. meantime, save or unsaved, because the unsaved is still his children, too. He just waiting right. on them. And that's what I loved about you when you said Jesus came came to call the sinners to repentance. Mm -hmm. He's still calling. Exactly. So Exactly. Exactly. You know, and, and I look at it, too. You know, we just... <sighs> help us. <laughs> It help us, God, to get back to where we're supposed to be. So we, we've gone so far to the left. A lot of us have gone so far to the left that it doesn't make sense, you know. And it's a yeah. lot of people, you know, I talked to a, an apostle. She said, and I told her, you know, a lot of things we have to unlearn that we okay, were taught. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. We unlearn those things because it's, it's not healthy for our spiritual walk. It's not. So. And you know, Mr. Thomas, I, and and you know, I could be wrong, but this is just my personal opinion. I mm -hmm. think a lot of times that's why the sinners stay out as long as they do, because mm -hmm. if they see us Christians mm -hmm. doing the same thing, acting the same way, why in the world would it's I right. want to come out right. of my mess? Because I'm comfortable in my mess. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. But then you want them to come and say, oh, our Jesus is so good. And then they look at you and say, but you're in the church talking about people. Mm -hmm. You don't accept me when I come in and I got a little stench on me. Mm -hmm. You don't accept me because I don't come from where you come from. I don't dress like you dress or ride like you ride. Why in the world do we think people are going to come to the church when we are the church and we're acting like the world? Why? Exactly. There's no need. Because I used to say that myself. When my grandma used to say, oh, come to church, and I'd be like, mm -mm, if this how y'all doing church, mm -hmm. no, I don't want to do it because 
I'm safe out here in the world with my friends because th these these people got they real. Yeah, you know I used to look at that 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 same thing. You know, and my brother God rest his soul. We was to always talk about you know the contrasts. You know the church yeah. and this the world, the church in the world. And I told him, I said, well, first of all, I have I'm going to say this. We all have an individual walk, a personal walk. Now, where I am on the journey, you may be 50 miles up the road, and I can catch up. But it doesn't mean that you're any better than I am, or I'm any worse than you. You know, and that's, that's where a lot of us go left at is because yeah. we think because we're way up this road on this journey and i'm way back here at the start of this journey that i'm better than you back here I'm up here i'm better than you but you're not we're all trying to get home we're all and trying to get home we, you know we, we're trying to get there trying and just like you and me who's to say we we could we could have a hiccup tomorrow right right <laughs> right we can have a hiccup tomorrow and we have to go before him and say listen Mm -hmm. I totally messed this thing up. Mm -hmm. Give me, help me get back on the right, right track. Right. And keep you know, me on that track. Help me, right. to, help me get back on it. Help me to stay on it. Right. You know, and because and, and, we think, okay, some of us think we fell, we got to stay down. No. No. He didn't say, get up. Get, get up and keep going. Just because you fail, don't mean you got to stop there and wallow in it. Get up and keep going. And I don't care what people say about you because you fail. You get up and you keep going. You ask God for forgiveness. You ask God for strength, for help, and you go on. You know, regardless of what they have to say about it, because who's going to stand in judgment for you? Nobody. Nobody. You know, so I, I, I had to learn that. The hard way because and I, I thought when you said in 2000 you said you stop worrying about how folks feel about you and when i read it i was like yes because i'm gonna tell you what when you get delivered from people and how yeah. they feel about yeah. you you yeah. will live a life of peace mm -hmm. and surrender mm -hmm. and it does not mean that you're cocky or arrogant it just means that you finally figured out who you are in christ and you don't have to worry about what johnny say about you Fel felicia whoever it just Absolutely. means that you know what god i thank you yeah. i thank you that you gave me enough sense to say i am fearful and wonderfully made, not because mm -hmm. of who Johnny told me I was. Right. Uh, right. Um, Mr. Timothy said the kingdom message is the only message which change the lives of people. That's why he says seek the kingdom first. Sure. Absolutely, Mr. Timothy. Thank you for joining. But I mean, and we get so stuck, and that's why I say people will fail us every time. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. we don't when we don't meet their standards or we mess up if you will yeah. they don't talk about mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. they don't dog mm -hmm. us but yes. god say i got you my daughter mm -hmm. i got you my son yes mm -hmm. you messed up get up dust yourself off and let's keep walking let's keep yeah. moving. right right you know i tell people all the time you know the bible says i knew you before i formed you in your mother's womb Absolutely. So he knew us before he formed us well, yeah, no, he, he don't know us now he didn't know what we were going to do he, he knew we were going to fall where we we're going to fall how we we're yes, going to fall he yes. all of it. so i don't worry about how people feel about me what they say about me go on that's your opinion you, that, you, can't, not, you can't change it mm -hmm. because and i'm not going to run down a lie i'm no. not because I, you can lie to me all day long I don't care about that, but I'm not going to run it down because I know no. me and the world are the truth. And that's one thing I realized. And, you know, and I was um, at a church when I was just a baby in Christ. And mm -hmm. that is one thing the pastor said. God knew us from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So do you think he don't know that I was saying tomorrow if that was in the plan for me? He already know. Mm -hmm. And so even when we go through he already accounted all this in all he wants us to do is continue to trust him that's it that's it but that's when, it. when will people when will we be like that 
When when we gonna be like that? That's a good question. And, <laughs> and, and the sad thing is, I hope we don't be like that when it's time for us to check up out of here. Right. I hope right. that we can truly show people the love and the grace and the mercy that God stores upon us every mm -hmm. day. If you said that yesterday, I still love you. What can I do to help you get back on track? Right. What do you need from me? Instead of me saying, well, I told you you should have been hanging out over there. You wouldn't got caught up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, point the finger. Yeah. yeah, they don't need that. We need to love people and genuinely love people where they're at with no hidden motives, no hidden mm -hmm. anything. Right. Right, love them where it, it doesn't mean that if you, you love them where they are, it doesn't mean you have to agree exactly you don't have to yeah. agree but you have to love him he says to love he's a god of love if you yeah. love us in our mess we got to love one another in there in our mess you know he if you out there doing whatever you're doing i still gotta love you you know i can't just bypass right. you and look at you my nose turn up like i'm better than you i still gotta love you and if there's anything right. i can do to help i do what i can do to help right you know he doesn't he doesn't turn his back on us. Like he, we he doesn't back not. Absolutely. And so when you have friends or family that may fall, that's, you know, that's Christian and trying to walk this Christian walk, mm -hmm. how do you encourage them? Because I know, you know, sometimes in families, you know, they'd be like, oh, well, you know, Uncle Tom over here, you know, he's so straight laced. He's so safe. You know, mm -hmm. if you do something wrong, he might not. But how do you? let your family know that you know i i still love you because you know you probably got one of your family that people be like well you know auntie so-and-so you know she is just like straight laced you know you can't mess up because you're gonna get a blast but how do we and how do you handle your family members your friends, your coworkers, to let them know you know what i'm just like you i am on this journey trying to make it myself i tell them the absolute truth you know i tell whatever god lays on my heart to tell people i tell them whether it's family friend or foe i right. tell them because i have to be obedient to what he's telling me to do absolutely you know, if you don't want to accept what he's telling you through me that's between you and him but my hands are clean because i was obedient and i told you right. you know and, and a lot of people they want to hear the truth but they don't want to hear it from you they and want they to hear from the prophets. They want to hear. Right. <laughs> they want to hear from the prophets, the apostles. They, but, but see, this is I, I'm, and I know we're laughing, but we're not making fun of people. But right. it's amazing how, you know, you think that these big pastors got these big titles that their word is like, oh, it's it's the law. Mm -hmm. But just a lay person like me. Lay person like you, you know, love the Lord and he can talk to me just like he talked to them big name people. Mm -hmm. Why is it that we don't want to receive it from the lay people? Because the package isn't what we what we're looking for. You know, you look for all of this, yeah. the hour. <laughs> yeah. You got a Christmas package wrapped in, in newspaper. Right. You, you think that's ain't nothing in that package but you see it right over here in this christmas wrapping paper oh this gotta be something it's gotta so be something when the message comes from the the box that's in wrapped in newspaper you don't want to receive it because it don't look like what you mm -hmm. think it should look like and you miss out and that was my post this afternoon you know we mm -hmm. miss out because the messenger is not doesn't look like what we expect what we want it right, to look like right. miss out on, on a blessing from god you know yesterday a friend of mine who's laying up in the hospital now he called me had his mom to call me got on the phone mm -hmm. and he said i gotta tell you something and i said what and he and i have had conversations for years you know mm -hmm. he always, he always told me i was a prophet i don't know why but right. he told me he said i got something to tell you he said you always told me to be obedient to what god tells me Right. I you. and he told me something that god had told him to tell me mm -hmm. you know and i received it you know and mm -hmm. i received it because i it was already in my spirit so right. he was confirming something god had already put in my spirit you know so it wasn't that because it was him that i mm -hmm. wouldn't receive it mm -hmm. or had it come from somebody else i would receive it mm -hmm. you, know, you don't you have to be discerning you know god, you know, 
you know, you have to pray for these these things to manifest in your life. And a lot of times we miss out because that package is wrapped like we think it should be wrapped. Absolutely. And that's sad. That yeah. is truly sad that it is. when a person give us a word, because God could give a homeless man mm -hmm. a word for, for us. Yes, and Damn. like you said, because he's homeless and he doesn't look like the prize shined up right. package, we dismiss it. And God mm -hmm. is saying, right. what you needed from me, mm -hmm. I gave it to him to tell you, to tell you. Oh, because you looked at the outer, now yes. you missed it. So mm -hmm. you got to wait. You mm -hmm. got to wait. Mm -hmm. He's no respect of person. None. He uses whomever. Who, who, whomever. Yes. 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 And so what church do you attend and do you sing, you know, in the choir or? I am a member of St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church in Jackson Hamlet here. Okay. And right now I'm not, I haven't been singing in the choir for a while because of my work schedule. Right. But we're working our way back to that. This we we met last week, so we on right. our way back. I miss that. I really do. I really do. I, I, I know. I um I went back to my church um because you know when my late husband passed away, mm -hmm. it was hard for me to go back to a place that we worship together. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I went. I tried to change seats, mm -hmm. you know, but still my spirit was just like, mm, I just I just couldn't do it. Yeah. And so when I went back yesterday, it just felt good. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you're home, right. you know, right. you're home. And so, you know, I I truly miss it. Um, I'm just excited about getting back, you know, on the praise, you know, team and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And that's like you said, you know, with my grieving, that was still part of my grieving. Like I had to get through because that's a place where him and I worship. It wasn't that, oh, I went because he went. It was a place that we was together and we worshiped uh -huh. that right. part. That part right. died when he died. Yeah. So, and I had to build myself back up. Mm -hmm. And and God always do stuff in His time. Exactly. You know? Oh, you just said it. That's actually the, the title of my next CD in His time. Yes. And, you know, we, we try to put like we so we put the what is it, the cart before the horse, yes. the wagon. Yes. We always try to put what we want to do before God, and right. it, never, it will never work. Mm -hmm. You know, when you going to put your CD out, when you put, I said, in when God says so, you know, in His time, you know, I wanted to put it out a couple of years ago. It wasn't His time, you know. So mm -hmm. that's why I just titled it "In His Time." Yeah. yeah, and just like and speaking of that, you um in November, November twenty eighth, you said learn to trust God for what you've asked for. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't allow it, it wasn't meant, but trust him, he knows best. And we have cool. the hardest time because I am guilty of that myself. <laughs> I've I've been guilty of that myself, but now yeah, I'm truly uh after my husband's death, I mm -hmm. truly knew what it meant to really trust mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. You know, you know, we trust him, but sometimes when life throws us a lemon or throws us death or whatever the case or our challenges mm -hmm. may be, that's a time where we, we have to seriously check ourselves, right. see right. if our faith is really right. where we've been saying that, exactly. that is. Exactly. <laughs> you know? And so and for me, it wasn't that I didn't you know, trust him, mm -hmm. but after, because he prepared me for the death. Uh -huh. It was after where I really had to say, I trust you with everything that I am because I know if you prepared me for his death, mm -hmm. then I know you're going to still be with me he after. He's going to take you through it. Right. Yes. And so, but that's the hardest thing because people are like, oh, I trust God. I trust God. Bam, you have a situation. Mm -hmm. He's saying, do you still yeah. trust me? Yeah. My nieces and nephews, they ask me a lot of times, you know, um, how, how do you deal with all that has happened? Uh, I pray a lot. You know, some mornings I'm up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm just talking mm -hmm. to God about whatever. And there are mornings when he would wake me up out of my sleep and he'll say, call out your nieces and nephews' names. Mm -hmm. And I thought, God, it's a whole lot of them. It's about 30 of them. <laughs> 
So I'm gonna call out everybody's name before him. I just give here you go. This is what you told me to do. I'm calling out their names to you because I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. You know, right. I'm not the type of right. uncle. Who, I'm not the type of uncle who gets in their business. Absolutely. So, when they draw me in there, then they got to listen to what I got to say. Absolutely. But other than that, I don't just go around and just try to get in. What are y'all doing? What's going on? What you doing? I, I don't do that. Right. Now I wait for them to come to me. I always leave the door open. Whatever they want to come to me with, I'm here for that. But praying, I, oh my God. So I think sometimes he might get tired of me. <laughs> I, <hate laughs> stop, I won't stop praying. <laughs> I won't stop praying because the enemy is busy. He yes. is busy, and, yes. and we have to. He's on his game. We got to be on ours. And that's you know? what the young. I can't remember this lady's name. She's an older black lady, and I, I was at my game, and I told her she's like, "Yes, I know him. I'm gonna have to when I find out her name. I'm gonna have to inbox you and let you know her name." But she knew who you were, and and that's so true because me and her was talking about that. We we. This world, you know, it the devil is on his job. He is doing his job, but it's us. It's up to us as Christians to do ours too. Exactly, exactly. We, we have to do ours, and you know. And I was at work today, and I was just, you know, in prayer, and I just got my oil out, and I just anointed myself, and I was just like, Lord, you know, just creating me a clean heart, just. Let me just be who you want me to be. Do what you want me to do. And, you know, and I even say, whoever come in my office, let them come with a spirit of joy and leave with something that they don't even know what they're leaving with, but to feel your presence yeah. when they come in. Yes, yes. That, that's my, my main thing because I, I do my office a lot. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's like a revolving door. So I always I have my take my oil with me to work. I'm not my, myself before my I day at work, I just put it up there. And like today, I just felt the need to anoint myself because mm -hmm. you can tell when stuff is getting ready to explode or when God is getting ready to elevate you to the next mm -hmm. level. And mm -hmm. so you have to be ready. Yes. You have to be ready. Absolutely. So I was just in there and I was just in prayer because we're just in a praying time and we don't, we can't go to your car and pray. If you're in a space, go to the bathroom, wherever you need to right. go. Or like right. you said, just walking down the halls and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we have to get back to praying, praying for our nation. We do. We really do. There was I used to work on a, in a position. I worked in Dunn, and every morning, uh, the, the department heads would get together and we would have morning prayer. Wow. And then I would go back into the kitchen, which is my department, and me and my staff would have prayer again, and. Some people didn't like it on the on, mm -hmm. on the job, but I'm like this. If you think he's gonna stop me from praying, then you might as well tell, open the door and tell me to go. You know, because I'm going right. to pray, you know, right. and if you right. close my foot up in the office, I'm gonna pray, but you're not gonna stop me. I'm not doing it for a show. Right. But because right. that when we were when we prayed together, we prayed because everybody was everybody was going through something. Of course we always mm -hmm. do. But we prayed together because we all were at a place, a low place. Mm -hmm. That's what we started out together. And I, I, had, I was hurt, and they were hurt. I didn't know right. them. That was my right. first time meeting them. And we just gelled together. And mm -hmm. even to this day, we still keep in contact. And that was seven years ago. You know, and I, so I, my thing is, if you, if you can pray anywhere. But when you're doing it for a show, Mm -hmm. you reward right there you know he Absolutely. Said, go into your secret closet and pray i mm -hmm. reward you openly you know we try to do things so people can see us so we can be mm -hmm. no you know that's not why you do it you know right. it, it's, it's that's not why he told us to do to pray right right and you know and that's why you like you have to have just discernment you know because i um had an event and um i knew a particular friend of mine and I know her and I felt something was off mm -hmm. and so I end up um, inboxing her and I was like are you okay because I felt like something was wrong and she said wow she said I didn't know that you and I were that connected mm -hmm. she because I thought I was hiding it yeah but yeah when, and I told her I said when I love you that means I truly love mm -hmm. you so when I see you, just like if you and I are connected and I see you 
something looks different. Mm -hmm. I see you from, from spiritual. Right. Not that oh, we got an attitude or you know whatever, and and that's how it was with her. I knew because her energy and everything around her was saying something different. Right. And I, mm -hmm. I didn't bother her that day, but I knew. And when I um, yesterday, I I texted her and I was like, "Are you okay?" Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's where we have to look at people, whether they're our friends or whether they're our coworkers, we have to look past what we see right. and see them in the spirit because a lot of times people are hurting and they just want somebody to 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 say you know what it's gonna be okay it's gonna be okay absolutely absolutely and that right there can change their lives whether they're saved or unsaved and say mm -hmm. how did he know right. how did she know that i needed that just that little word it's gonna be okay mm -hmm. Yeah, I've had to go through that even on my, my current job where God was just dealing with me and dealing with me about this particular person. And it was so heavy on me that I had to actually close myself up in my office and get on that hard concrete floor and just pray. Jesus. And while I'm praying and calling out his name before God, you know, he walks by and mm. he opens, he said, are you okay? And I said, Head up, I'm okay, and he went on. But then, when God allowed us to sit down to talk, mm -hmm. I told him what God had told me to tell him, and that's when he began calling me the prophet. I was like, No, I'm right. just being obedient, you know. And, right. and a, lot of, a lot of times, y'all are going through things that y'all don't think nobody knows about. Mm -hmm. I said, A lot of times, I know what you're going through, I know when you're hurt, and I know what mm -hmm. you when you're afraid. Mm -hmm. I know, I know those things because mm -hmm. I can see them just like you walked in that door. I can see it, yeah. You know? and, yeah. and I don't, a lot of times, I don't say anything. I just start praying, Lord, have mercy. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. he's he going through this, she's going through this, this is happening, that's happening. And I just start praying, I just leave it alone, and then you'll come right back and you'll mm -hmm. tell me. I'm this. I'm going through that. This is happening, and I just tell you what God tells me to you. Sometimes you can pick that Bible up. He mm -hmm. said, "Man, I can always pray." So stop asking everybody to pray for you. Pray for you. Absolutely. Yourself. Yes. Yes. <laughs> or wait till you get to the church. What if the church um, burned down? You can't get to the pastor. Right. Pray, man. I can always pray. So you part of man. Pray. You know, go home and go. In your closet, go in the bathroom when there's nobody there but you. Just talk to the Lord, you know. And I talk to Him like I'm talking to you right now. I when I mess up, I be like, listen, I don't jack up. My attitude is messed up. Like I need you. I don't go to Him trying to be all cute and be right. like, oh, Lord, you know what? You need to help me today because today is not the day that they're gonna try me. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. And I'm just being transparent because because He already know that if they say one more thing, my daughter might just go off. But it's good when you can have a relationship with the father and be like, you know what? You got to help me today. Mm -hmm. Because I can't do it by myself. No. But if I do it, <laughs> I would make it worse than it already is. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And so before we close, mm -hmm. just give us some encouraging word that if somebody watched this, whether they're saved or unsaved, that they can just know that it's going to be okay. Well, the father said, that he would never leave us nor forsake us. Believe that. You know, whatever it looks like, just believe that God is always there. He's approachable. He's not this, yeah. this, this lion that you walk, you can't walk up to, you can't approach. He's the, he's somebody, he loves us. Regardless yes. of what we've done, God loves us. And he, he wants what's best for us. He knows what's best for us. Just reach out to him. He's standing there. Jesus is right there with his arms stretched wide open, waiting on it. And right. that's all. That's all you got to do is just, just return to him or turn to him if you haven't. Mm -hmm. Turn to him and trust him. You know, like you trust your money, trust him because he can do what he can do what nobody else can do. And I had to learn that too. You know, uh -huh. I'm sitting here. I'm working. I'm working. I'm working. I'm gonna make this money. Make this money. But the money went. Got gone. Lord, mm -hmm. how am I going to do this? Lord, how, that's the first thing I did. Lord, how am I going to do this? How am I going to make it? So, right. And I had to learn to trust him. And I mm -hmm. had to even apologize to God for not right. trusting him. You know, mm -hmm. you, 
You know, I'm going around here and I'm telling everybody to trust God, trust God, trust God. Then I wasn't trusting him for myself, and I had to go to him and apologize for that because I was wrong for not trusting him the way I was encouraging others to trust him. Mm. So get that relationship with him for yourself. Don't do it because mom and daddy, cousin, aunt, grandma, and them said so. Mm. Do it for yourself because, again, at the end of the day, at the end of this journey, you're going to be there by yourself to give an account for everything doing in this body. So just be encouraged and look to the Lord. Look to the hills from which comes your help. Your yeah. help coming from the Lord which made heaven and earth. So trust him. Trust him. Trust him. Mm. Well, I have so enjoyed our interview. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank um, you. I can't wait to um, <clears throat> be following you to see when you're going to do your stage play and your music and just continue to just do what God has you to do and that sometimes can be the hardest thing because sometimes we feel like we're not reaching people but absolutely yeah, if, there, if i reach one i've that done is, a great great job and, that, and that's how i every time i do my interview you know i say if one person on here heard a message mm -hmm. from my guest about their life challenges then that's all that matters right that's all that matters that's because you know faith of a mustard seed mm -hmm. to change something lives yeah. and so and that's why i do this so people can see that we're ordinary people yes. but god yes. can still use us even in our faults yes. shortcomings yes he can he used noah he was a yes. drunk yeah so. <laughs> so why not why can't he use us then right that's what right. we have to tell him people mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you in your sin all that matters is you come out he's waiting like you said yeah. he's yeah. still calling you repent come out exactly 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 yeah but i am so thankful 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 i'm always thankful when i meet new people because i like i said earlier like half of the people that i have interviewed i have never ever met well but i'm, I'm when, thankful for this platform that you have yeah when he tells me or they reach out then i know it's him and mm -hmm. And everybody, like, I'm nervous. I don't know how to do it. But when we get on here, it's just we just letting people know we're ordinary people doing extraordinary things in our lives and in our community. And that's what it's about. Letting people know, you know what? I had some hiccups, but look at me. God can change right. you just like He's changing me. Yeah, he's and He's changing you and me and every other Christian day by day, minute by minute. And so if he can do it for us, that's what we need to let people know. Yep, I had some hiccups. Exactly. I was out there in my scene, and when I was out there in my scene, I enjoyed it. I had a good time. Mm -hmm. But when he We're brought all me in, right, when he brought me in, he still helps me. He right. still deals with me. Exactly. But he still loves me. Exactly. And that's what exactly. people need to know, that no matter mm -hmm. what you've done, he is a loving and forgiving father. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Okay, here I go. I'm trusting you. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Mr. Thomas. But when I find that, I'm going to um, text her daughter and find out her name because it's going to bother me. And you probably, she knows you really good. Yeah, so, <laughs> it's going to bother me. But thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you um, for thank just you. coming on. And um just continue to just allow God to use you. Amen. Amen. I definitely will. And I thank you for allowing me thank to be you. the guest tonight. I've enjoyed it. I really have. Yes, I have too. Thank you. And so all you have to do is you just close yourself out and I'll stay on. But have a great weekend and um, happy holidays. Same to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. -bye. Bye. So do you see where it say exit? Okay, yeah. So guys, thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in. Um, I saw my nephew on here, Tyrell. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, um, Aquarius. Um, who else on here? Um, Mr. McNeil, my cousin. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Hot Topics with Donna. Guys, continue to trust God with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. If you have um falling by the wayside all you have to do is repent he will forgive you if you want to be saved it's easy just ask him to save you but most of all love yourself treat yourself well 
And don't allow people to make you feel less than. We all fall short. We all make mistakes. But one thing about it, we have a loving and forgiving father that will forgive us. They're not like us as humans because, you know, if we do something and it's not fitting, people hold it against us. They dog us out. They bash us. They talk junk about us. But it's okay, because like Mr. Thomas said, the way you judge, you shall be judged yourself. So if you make a mistake, whether you're Christian, non-Christian, just say, Lord, forgive me. And just remember, God said, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. So you don't owe no explanation to anyone, because no one has heaven or hell to put us in. As long as you are good in your spirit with the father that's all that matters and the people that's going to love you they're going to love you the people that's going to be there for you in your mistakes your highs and your lows and don't turn their back on you but still show you grace and mercy like our father show us when we in our mess that's what it's about we have to show people love it doesn't mean that you agree with what they're doing but you don't have to bash them either you don't have to talk I'll junk about, oh, well, you know, if you love Christ, you wouldn't be doing this. Well, if you love Christ, you wouldn't be judging. How about that? Because you can't get so high that you think you have arrived because you haven't. So love people where they're at. It doesn't mean you're in agreement with what they're doing. It just means that, you know what? They have a need. They don't fail short. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know their story. So before you find yourself in judgment, ask God to give you discernment and say, what word or kind act I can do to help this sister or this brother? Even if it's just, you got this. Because we are dealing with a lot of things in the last days. And we don't need people to bash us when we're, we're already bashing ourselves. So before you find yourself in judgment, ask God. God, what can I do to lift this person up? What kind word can I say to lift this person up? And if you, you have none, then pray for them, but don't hurt them. This has been another episode of Hot Topics with Donna. I am your host. On Hot Topics with Donna, we interview ordinary people doing extraordinary things in their lives and in their community. If you or someone you know would like to be on Hot Topics with Donna, the only requirement is that you're going to be honest, open, and transparent. And you can reach out to us, and one of us will um, schedule you an interview. Guys, I love you. I will be back tomorrow, as Lord's willing. Continue to pray for each other. And most of all, continue to pray for yourself that you will be better than you were today. Come tomorrow, if God allows us to see it. With that being said, good night. I love you. Bye.